Hi friends, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I am here with an unhaul video. Let's jump right into it. All right, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I feel a little bit out of control, the thing that I do is uh, purge. I purge. I recently bought a book that I didn't even love. I bought a copy of Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson because I love Sorcery of Thorns and I really enjoyed Enchantment of Ravens and I got an arc of Vespertine and didn't love it. However, I heard that there were significant changes between the arc and the finished copy and that uh, Margaret Rogerson had been feeling the quarantine vibes when she wrote it and so she adjusted it a little bit. I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt because I really love her other works and I liked the writing style of the book. I got it home and I was like, I have nowhere to put it. My shelves have no room. I started to realize that I have room on my TBR shelves, but not my red shelves. So I needed to clear space for more red books, like books that I've read and decided to keep and I love. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to have an abundance of TBR shelves and then no room for the books that I really love and want to keep. That is the point of my bookshelves. I only have these two, so I need to make the most of them. So I decided to go through and uh, just cull. Some of this stuff just can't stay. So I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26, 27 things. So I think there's a couple graphic novels. First up are two books that actually came from the Bubbles and Books box because to be completely honest, I'm probably not gonna read a mass market paperback. The premise of these sound good, but I think I could probably get them on ebook if I decided to go forward. So this is Before I Wake, which is about a girl who can like steal people's nightmares or go into people's nightmares, but then she meets somebody who doesn't dream. And then uh, Jane Ann Krentz writing as Jane Castle in Amaryllis. And this one is about a psychic detective. I'm also going to get rid of this gorgeous copy of Beautiful Broken Things by Sarah Bernard. I loved A Quiet Kind of Thunder. Loved it. I have it and I got the like really pretty UK edition that matches this, but it's a YA contemporary book and I am not reading YA anymore. I'm gonna be really, really, really selective about the YA books that I keep that I think I'm going to read. And this is, despite really loving her other books, I don't think I'm ever gonna read it. The same with The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. I've had this arc for ages. This came out in February of 2020. And I know for sure this is on Hoopla. So if I need to, or if I want to, I can read the audiobook. I already have it favorited because I figured that would be how I read this. And I haven't heard bad things. I just know I'm probably not gonna pick it up. I have Sparrow, which I kept for a long time. This is by Mary Cecilia Jackson. This was a proof that I got at ALA and this was set to come out March, 2020. This is about a ballerina and pff, I am not a ballerina girl. I'm not somebody who cares about ballerina stories, but this one followed some kind of like trauma or abuse and her um, kind of overcoming that. And the taglines really got me. There are two kinds of people on the planet, hunters and prey. I thought I would be safe after my mother died. I thought I could stop searching for new places to hide, but you can't escape what you are and what you've always been. My name is Savannah Darcy Rose and I am still prey. Seemed like it would be my kind of hard hitting YA. Like if I'm gonna keep a YA, it's probably gonna be hard hitting, but I don't think I'm ever gonna get to it. Um, I also have when You Were Everything by Ashley Woodfolk. This one really intrigued me because this is a YA about two friends and like a really close friendship. And then it's like a friendship breakup. I think we've all been there. I thought it would be like really poignant, really, really great to read, but I don't think I'm ever going to read this. I just, I think I've kind of passed that stage. Tigers Not Daughters by Samantha Mabry. Mabry? Mabry. This one is another one that I got at ALA and I started to read this because this is about a group of I think four sisters and it's kind of got like speculative fiction um, aspects to it and I'm the oldest of four girls and I thought that this would be like a really amazing tale. Uh, Blur by C Courtney Summers and it, it got a lot of like buzz originally. I got like a chunk of the way in and I just, it, it wasn't working. So I'm gonna put that one 
aside to go. I'm also getting rid of Sweet Temptation by Wendy Higgins. This, I love the Sweet Evil series by her and I will probably always hold on to it even though it's like a very tropey old YA series. But this is book four. This is Caden's story. I don't think I'm going to keep this one. I don't think I need it. I don't think I'm ever going to reread the series to be honest. I just really, really, really loved it. Like I, I really liked this series, but I don't think I need Caden's story. I feel like this is one that can go and I can just keep the original three. I'm also going to get rid of some Labyrinth graphic novels. I picked all of these up because Labyrinth, right? This is Return to the Labyrinth. These are following Toby as he goes back to the Labyrinth to become potentially the next Goblin King. And it kind of veered a little too far away from like the original for me to really get invested in. The art style is okay. We don't really get glimpses of the story that I love and it's just a little too far off the mark for me to like want to hold on to the three of them. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I read this as a buddy read at some point. Oh god, the dust. I didn't love it. I don't need to keep it. Paper Heart by Jennifer LeBlanc. This is an indie author who has written other books, like I think it's a duology, um, that I helped to beta read and talk about and I'm in the acknowledgments for it and I think it's a really fun series. Um, but this is a poetry bind up and I, I read it and it's, it's fine. It's, it's great. I don't think I need to keep it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one. Getting rid of my arc of A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I really liked this arc. I loved this book and I don't have a problem with it. The problem is I don't, I'm never going to continue with this series. I don't want to continue with this series. Um, I had an arc of book two and I've unhauled the arc of book two. And I thought about keeping this one because I really did like this story, but I'm never going to reread it. Angel, which is just like a single bind up that I got at ALA and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, both graphic novels, I don't think I need. Also going to go ahead and unhaul Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian. Nazemian? This is one that I know is also available through my library or Hoopla. I think one or the other. The other book that I have that's similar. We Are Lost and Found. This one is by Helene Dunbar. This one's definitely on Hoopla. These are both set in I think New York in the 80s and they both follow like the AIDS epidemic and also queer characters and I'm here for them and I'm kind of excited about it. It's giving me like rent vibes and I like that. Um, they're beautiful books. I love the covers I'm, but I, I just I don't I'm not gonna read them. Um, and not from lack of interest, but just because when I'm making time for reading now, I'm just super selective. The YA books are not happening. So if I ever want to read them, I know I can get them from my library and that will be fantastic. I'm getting rid of Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I am so angry at myself, so angry at myself because I read an arc of this. I hated this book. I hated this book and I gave it two stars. It's not a good book. And I got it from Book of the Month because I have all of his other ones. This is straight up hot garbage and I, I don't know why I got it. I was like, oh, I need to have all of his books. No, I don't. No, if I like if I like them, sure. She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Again, a book that's getting a lot of buzz. I'm interested in it, but I think I would probably do audiobook if I read this one. I don't think I would read this one physically and I would rather somebody else be able to read this. I'm also getting rid of Horrid by Katrina Leno because I don't like her books. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Everybody was talking about them and I was like, oh, I'm gonna love them. It's gonna be great. I don't. But this one came in as an Owl Crate book and I loved the cover. So what I did is I put the cover on another book because the exclusive cover, the reversible cover, beautiful. I actually have it on Bird and Falls by Kat Ellis, which I actually really love that cover, but it's like white and this one kind of fit with it. And it was the right size to go on. I'll probably find a different book for that to go on, honestly. I don't owe anybody a dust jacket when I get rid of a book. I have an author letter in here. It's a sign, first edition. They're not getting a jacket, a dust jacket with it. Like, I'm sorry, not sorry, um, but I like the dust jacket. <laughs> it's the only thing I liked about this book. It's creepy. It has, like, kind of creepy haunted house vibes, but I didn't, I didn't love it. I end up hating the way she ends her stories. I always love like the, the way that she weaves her story and the premise is there and it like almost really works for me but then it never does and I end up just being frustrated. Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power. Did not like Wilder Girls. Wilder Girls? Didn't like it. 
didn't like it at all. I thought this one had potential. None of the reviews that I've seen for this have made me want to pick it up. The people that seem to like this are people that seem to really, really like her writing style, which I didn't. So I, it's just, I'm, why am I keeping it? I'm not keeping it. I'm not. I've kept this book for the longest time, The Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. I kept this because I got this at a really cute used bookstore barn when Chelsea came to see me the first time. And I was like, I'm gonna keep this because it's like sentimental. It reminds me of going book shopping with Chelsea. And I I wanted to, to see it. I have no interest in royal romance, none. The whole prince, princess, like it doesn't appeal to me. This thing is huge. Like I don't need to keep, it's taking up space. I don't, I can't, I can't continue to keep it on my shelves. I'm also going to get rid of this, which a couple of these I think were gifted and or sent to me. Um, this one definitely was. This is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgkins Burnett. Uh, this is the illustrated version. I have read this. It has beautiful illustrations inside. I love The Secret Garden. It's one of my favorite books of all times. I'm actually gifting this to my niece. Um, so this is going to stay in the family, but I'm going to gift it to her because I think that this is something that would be really, really nice on her bookshelves. And then I am finally caving. This is the largest book ever. Uh, this is How to Make a Spaceship, a Band of Renegades, an Epic Race, and the Birth of Private Space Flight by Julian Guthrie. This was gifted to me by a man that I really admire who helped it when I was a business owner to kind of like mentor us as new business owners. We got together for dinner and he gifted me this book because it was an inspiration to him in his journeys and he thought it would be an inspiration to me. And he wrote a beautiful message inside of it. I am going to cut the message out. I'm going to keep the letter because I do think it's really, really sweet. And that's the part that I was holding on to. But I, I tried. I don't have any interest in this kind of nonfiction. I gave it a solid try. I know he doesn't watch my videos, but I'm sorry, David, I'm keeping your letter. It's beautiful, it means a lot to me, but the book didn't work. So what I'm gonna do now is try to rework my TBR shelves down into one shelf. Crazy, right? I do have some TBR stuff, like some of my Brandon Sanderson, I haven't read. Some of my sci-fi, like you can just see Christopher Paolini's to, to sleep in a, to dream in a sea of stars, whatever it is, I haven't read that yet. Down here on the shelf with uh, Claire Legrand's Lightbringer series, no, Imperium Trilogy. I've read the first two, not the third, but the third is down with that book. So I have like randomly placed a book that I haven't finished yet or haven't read yet because it belongs on a shelf with other books. And then I have designated TBR shelves. I have one and a half TBR shelves. I'm going to try to get them all onto one shelf. I'm going to go. I'm going to reorganize and if I come back with any more you'll see another clip if not that is it for this unhaul I feel so much lighter I feel so much better and I really love the concept of just really keeping it down to like one TBR shelf and then having all of my other shelves be books that I absolutely love and I want to be a little bit more careful I want to read from the library I want to read from other places and when I know I love a book put it on my shelves is that ambitious? Yes. Will it happen? Probs not. But I'm gonna try. I am going to genuinely try. Let me know if you think any of these are ones I should prioritize finding from the library and or audiobook. These are going regardless. I'm not putting anything back on my shelves. So these are all gonna go. But let me know if you think any of these are ones that I should try to pick up in another format from the library or audiobook because you think it's still worth reading. Do I now have more books mixed in with my read that are unread? Yes. I feel better. That matters, right? Maybe, maybe sort of. I am deciding to get rid of The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I know the audiobook is on Hoopla. I don't think I need this. The hype I think has like left for that. And while I do think I'll still enjoy it, I think the audiobook is just fine. I don't think I need the physical. I'm also gonna get rid of Imaginary Friends by Stephen Shabatsky. I've had this for forever. I've heard so many people say that it was really, really creepy in the beginning. They really liked where it was going. And then it took a turn and became like religious and like religion heavy. And even the people that I know that really love horror have not loved this book. I'm never gonna read it because I've heard too many people say that they didn't like it for me to want to spend the time picking up this behemoth of a book. I now have, which you can't see, right down here, half of this is read, half of this is unread. Up here I have uh, like my special editions into Schwab. It's mostly Schwab. It's almost an entire shelf of B.E. Schwab. 
or Victoria Schwab. It's a combination. But I do have a couple of TBR books up there. So let me tell you what I have up there. And then you can tell me if I should read any of them immediately. Neverworld Wake, The Bone House, The Ravenous, In the Ravenous Dark. Um, I'm really excited about all of those still. The City of Brass and The Girl in the Tower. I read Bear and the Nightingale. Didn't love it, but didn't hate it. And I heard the aspects that I loved about The Bear and the Nightingale will get more prevalent in The Girl in the Tower. So I'm going to at least try to read it. I don't know if it's going to stay. So those are my unread on that shelf. Unread on this shelf right here is just Christopher Paolini's To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. This is my thriller horror shelf and all of this is read. Down on the shelf below I have Lightbringer which is the third in the Imperium trilogy by Claire Legrand. That's the only thing that I have left unread. And then I have Normal People by Sally Rooney, Sky Falling by Mia McKenzie, uh, The Love Hypothesis, Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts, The Reckless Oath We Made, Mask of Mirrors, Jasmine Throne, The Atlas Six, and then an arc called Find Me. Um, those are my TBR over there. I have a whole bunch of Sanderson TBR. Back here now I have my Muse of Nightmare, Strange to Dreamer special editions, and then some favorites. I have like all my Margaret Rogerson here, and then Strange Grace, and then all of my book. Uh, lots of my book. I have more YA down here. A lot of it is Owl Crate books. I can read off some titles and you can let me know. Serpent and Dove, Crier's War, and The Bone Crier. Are those two different things? They're two different things. In the Wild Light, Mermaid Moon, another Crystal Sutherland that I think I'm going to really love. I, I, there's books down there that I really, I think I'm excited for. And then back here behind my chair in a shelf you'll never be able to see are more TBR books. I lied. I thought I only had a couple but I had more adult fantasy. We've got Brent Weeks, The Fifth Season, The Name of the Wind, The Astonishing Color of After, which I've tried to read and I don't love, but I have it signed and personalized and it's so beautiful and I think I want to keep it. I have King of Scars, which I don't think I'm ever going to read, but I haven't gotten rid of it yet because it's signed and personalized. I probably just should though. Paranormal Vampire books back there just because I think I still want them for like a fluffy mindless read at some point. Uh, and then Thriller Horror arcs and books back there. Everything that I have on my shelf I still want to read. The way that these are facing out I do have space now behind here to fit some things. I also have on this shelf um, over on the other side of it I have a tarot deck facing out and behind it nothing so I have some room to grow on this shelf which is good because I know the Skyward series is coming out with a third book soon which I've pre-ordered so I'll need to move all this over and make room for that. I know I have certain books coming that I need to make room for. This space right here will I, where I have room will probably be the new Diviner series. I got the box set from the Bookish Box. They're exclusive edition like foiled um, sprayed edges like books. I don't own the Diviner series and I wanted to have it once I knew like a box that was coming out or a collector's edition was coming out. So I did pick that up. So I know I have some stuff coming that I needed to make room for. So now I at least have room to play around and make that happen, which feels good. That's it. That's it for this unhaul. I need to get back to work, but I, I always feel better when I do one of these. So thanks for hanging with me while I did that. And that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up, interact with this video, leave me a comment down below, just an emoji, like the book stack emoji would be fantastic. YouTube is just burying my content. So if you can interact with this video in any way, shape or form, it really does help me. So leave me an emoji, leave me some kind of a comment, something to let me know that you were here. I would appreciate it. And I will see all of you in my next video. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.